Yeah. There was no severe weather, weather to the afternoon, except for kind of a lone gust of wind in the bedroom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the French Connections Tuesday edition. It is the seventh day of, of uh, February, and uh, it's a uh, it's a Tuesday. We've got lots of uh, things to, uh, to discuss today. We've got a special guest with us today. Uh, his name is Eustace Mullins. He's been on my, my program uh, two times before. Many things have been developing on um, both on the French Connection and uh, and in the world. And we're going to discuss with uh, with Eustace some of the some of these developments, and, and more more importantly. Uh, what he expects to come here, and we are getting traction uh, unlike any time uh, ever, I think. There are more people uh, waking up to the truth about uh, who is really in charge of things from behind the scenes than has ever been. And it, it must be stated here uh, at this time that, you know, the work we're doing and the, uh, the efforts we're making are just, they're just working out, guys. You know, now they're, they're very uh, angry about the successes we've had. Um, first of all, my name is Daryl Bradford Smith. I am the witness, and uh, this is the French Connection. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is Eustace Mullins, as I said. Um, he's been a researcher for many, many decades on these subjects and many others, but uh, today principally what we're going to talk about is the research that he's been able to do over time and some of the things he's found to be absolutely factual over time as well. Uh, and so I'm going to go right to him now. Eustace, are you with me? Eustace? Yes. Welcome, Eustace, to the French Connection. It's great to have you here again. Oh, great to be back with you. Well, here, here's some of the things I want to touch on today. Of course, we're getting some traction these days, Eustace. Uh, we're starting to get the word out, and uh, more people are waking up to the facts around uh, the Zionist uh, conspiracy than ever before. I mean, the groundwork was laid by people like yourself and Ben Friedman and, uh, and even uh, Bill Cooper and so many others. But it never was able to get traction in the country. Um, what do you how do you explain the traction we're getting? All of the people waking up to this right now. What do you, what do you explain that from? Oh, the, the tide is turning. See, now when Boy George took us into the Iraq War because of the neocons to help Israel, uh, it turned the whole world against him. <laughs> yeah. And it started the thing. It was the worst move they ever made because it's absolutely un un unjustifiable. And poor George is going to wind up with more than Nuremberg trials, uh, plotting and waging aggressive war. Well, and, and I think you're right. And then the, with the events of 9-11 being in question as well. Oh, it's not in question at all. I think most people <laughs> are pretty convinced what happened. Well, they, we are. We, we do know what happened, but we, we were never sure who they did it for until recently. Oh, yes. And we, we know now uh, that, well, let, who do you think we did this entire thing for, uh, Eustace? Oh, well, we didn't do anything. Well, what, did did the, whole what, did they, what did they do 9-11 for, and who did 9-11? Uh, Mossad did 9-11 because the New York Times and the uh, Washington Post both ran stories after 9-11 that 87% uh, of all the Muslims in the Middle East believed that this was a Mossad operation because it was, they knew that no Muslims were capable of carrying out such an operation. Well, uh, I believe that's true. And, and have you looked into any of the people who participated in 9-11? Well, I, I don't know if they ever uh, identified anybody that said Osama bin Laden did. Of course, he had less to do it than, than I had. Well, I, I think he was just the boogeyman that they pointed to. But oh, yeah, and Al-Qaeda's a boogeyman. Al-Qaeda doesn't exist. Well, it, it, it does by, by the creation of the CIA, Mossad, and MI6. Oh, yeah, it's part of the World Intelligence Network. Well, now, how does the uh, how does the MI6 and, and CIA uh, get away with uh, betraying the United States without the rest of the government uh, becoming aware of it? Well, the MI6 and the uh, British Secret Service have always been arms, not of the British government, but of the Bank of England and the Rothschilds. That's why they, uh, they're an independent government themselves. They have very little to do with the British people or the British government. And how about our CIA? Are they bought and paid for by the uh, by the Zionists as well? Oh, yes. They, they were set up in my book, The World Order. I, I give them uh, the, the founding fathers of the CIA in the World War II, and it was all set up in England by the British General Staff. Lord Bamad Batten, uh, Charles Hambro, a Jewish banker, and uh, three other members of the British General Staff. Uh, the Americans had nothing to do with the CIA. It was called the OSS in World War II. It later became the CIA. But uh, the Americans had uh, practically nothing to do with it. 
Well, I, I do have a question regarding uh, people such as um, uh, Ray McGovern, who actually, in, on my program, he has been coming out and saying in, in no uncertain terms that these events were uh, you know, on behalf of Israel and, uh, and and by them. I mean, he he's a well, twenty seven. Exactly true. Well, he's twenty seven years CIA. Oh yes. Well, uh, if you're in the CIA, you know that automatically anyway. They all know it, but they never mention it. Well, he's finally mentioning it. What 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 would you uh, what would you uh, say explains him mentioning it? He just seeing the country going down the tubes and doesn't want to doesn't well, want that to happen. Well, I think the uh, the Lusitania is going down, and he does want to. Uh, he wants to get a life raft somewhere. Ah. Well, you know, here, here's the interesting thing. Now, we we talked pr privately just before this uh, this interview about a man named uh, Bill Cooper down in uh, down in New Mexico who they Oh, an old friend of mine. Yeah, they murdered Bill and uh, one of the things I noticed when I read Bill's work yesterday uh, and used to say I apologize it was yesterday for the first time. Really? Yes, it was. I I've, I've only been doing this stuff for a year, Eustace. Oh, I see. And now here's this here's the interesting thing. My my research came, brought me to where I am today with this knowledge independent of both yourself and Bill Cooper. In other words, all three of us came to the same conclusion independently. Well, that's very good. And well, it is very good. Have too. I mean, it, it, it's it's irrefutable that I arrived at the at the Zionist based upon my research. And when I read Bill Cooper's work, it was it, almost identical to what I believed. And I said, this man years ago was brought to the same conclusions I've been brought to. And I'm wondering how come Bill couldn't get traction back in in that time. And uh, and and I, we know they murdered him, but. Uh, what what was the real reason they got rid of him? Is it because he was starting to get a, an audience for his information? He was getting an audience, and he was well respected, and he he was building a reputation. Bill was a hard worker, and he worked all the time. He and I were in London together for a meeting some years ago, and we had a great time over there. Well, you know, the last time we were uh, we we were on the radio together, we discussed uh, Ben Friedman, and we discussed. Um, um, Myron Fagan, oh, yes. but they're, they're really wonderful uh, researchers to set up for the truth. They don't necessarily tell the details of present-day uh, America and present-day what, what things that are happening in the world. So what do you think is going on right now? Are they uh, interested in a, a government centered out of um, Israel, out of uh, Jerusalem? Oh, that's the idea. That's, that's what the... Uh... Uh, state of Israel is set up for us. That's the ancient crossroads of the crossroads of the world. And of course, we have our troops now in ancient Babylon, back at Baghdad, which is, uh, everything is coming full circle right now. Well, the interesting thing they said in Bill's book was that, and, and this is where it parallels with my research. It comes down to um, a group of of, of um, rabbinical handlers uh, working around a figurehead Messiah. Oh yes. And that's exactly what Bill said years ago. And you know, that's the that's the place we've been brought to as well. And uh, when I when I came to that conclusion, I thought it was so outlandish and so ridiculous that I couldn't even start to fathom what what that that was the actual fact. And I started really investigating those facts. And yes, in fact, uh, it comes out of the Ashkenazi Jewish sect, and uh, and it comes out of. Uh, a the beginnings were, I guess, in the Frank, Frankist era, but have moved along through time into a very Kabbalistic and very, um, it, it's, a, it's a Talmudic tradition and a, and a Zohar tradition. Am I right? Oh, exactly. And uh, it's, it's based on numerology and all sorts of Kabbalistic tricks. Now, does that stuff have any well, validity in your mind? I mean, you know, I've had people talk to me, Eustace, that said to me that these people can actually do some of the stuff that's claimed. And I thought it was a bunk. Oh, it's absolute bunk. Uh, they really claim to be able to do black magic, and they, they can't do a damn thing. Well, what it is is a carnival sign show for the suckers. That's what I thought it was, too, and I called it Booga Booga. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what it is. So, uh, but they try to intimidate people into believing that they can do all this black magic, and uh, that is not true. They've never been able to do it. If they had, we wouldn't even be here. Well, can I ask you another question? I know that the American government has been uh, very active in creating these false stories about uh, UFOs, and, oh, yes. about, and they, they're behind this whole UFO movement, aren't they? Oh, yes. Well, it's all part of terrorism, because... 
uh, they like to terrify the people that these aliens are going to come swoop down uh, from Mars and take over the planet in, uh, next week, so there's nothing anybody can do about it. So anybody with a brain who's looked into this and who continues to promote uh, UFO stuff is either uh, off their rocker or part of a disinformation squad. Well, I, my audience used to ask me if I'd ever seen a, a UFO, and I said, no, I have never seen one, and neither has anyone else. <laughs> I love you, Eustace. You're the best. Uh, you know something, Eustace? You and I have oh, parallel thoughts here. I mean, everything. And what I've been doing, trying to get people away from some some of the sites that uh, that UFO stuff is on, have been mixing some truth with their UFOs. In other words, they're oh, yeah. putting... Yeah, they're putting UFO information along with some accurate information to create a, 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 a straw man um, system I, I, where they can deny the whole thing is being real. Well, that's the oldest trick of the book, give you a little bit of sugar with the medicine, you know. Well, it seems to have worked for many people. and, and It works on just about everybody. <laughs> well, it hasn't worked on me. Why is that, Eustace? <laughs> well, I think uh, uh, you and I have a, a strain of native common sense. It can be touched, and that's what brings us through. Well, I, I think you're probably right about that because, as I, as I told you, I started my investigation a year ago knowing almost nothing, and it, it brought me to where I am today. And one of the things that happened when I was on the radio last week was I, I began to uh, mention a group uh, of Kabbalists, uh, a specific group, and, boy, when I did that, uh, all hell broke loose oh, yeah. for me for me, and for others, and that was this group called the Shabbat Lubavitch. Oh, yes. Now, what do you know about the Shabbat Lubavitch? Uh, very little because, you know, they work behind the scenes. They, they stay out of sight. You only hear about the Lubavitches uh, up, up in the New York area and in uh, Israel itself sometimes, but uh, they don't have any public relations agents whatsoever. Are they, the, are they the real guys, the real people behind the throne? Oh, yeah. They're the manipulators. They pull the strings. And even with the bankers, the, the banking arm is what I've discovered is that the banking arm of the Rothschilds and, and the banking arm of Warburg and even the Federal Reserve is the political arm, and then these rabbis are the kind of the brains behind it or the spiritual arm. And there's kind of two camps within this, within this uh, hydra here, the two-headed hydra, I think. Oh, yes, that's the two-headed hydra. Well, I, well, they have different functions uh, throughout the system, but uh, they're all working, and well, they've managed to work together. They, they have managed to work together, and there is truth somewhere uh, that they've created the, the, the CFR, Consul on Foreign um, Relations. They've created the Illuminati group. They've, they've actually supported Freemasonry over time, but those are just sub-organizations of these people, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they're, they're different manifestations, but they're all working towards the same goal. Now, do the people in those organizations, by and large, know the goal? I don't think any of them know anything. Uh, Council on Foreign Relations. I've never heard that anybody at the Council on Foreign Relations really knows anything about anything. Well, how could uh, it be? That, is. How could it be that a guy like myself, after a year, would would end up at the truth, and people who've investigated this for many years don't get there? I I, I have to wonder if these people are actually investigating, or are they just covering up? Uh, Bob and Bob says cover, and that's cover-ups. Because if you really investigate it, you'd be fine, but you'd be absolutely sure to find out something eventually. But these people never find out anything. CFR and uh, uh, Illuminati and so forth, uh, they'll never reveal any of their discoveries to anybody. Now, here's the interesting thing, too. George Bush displays all these signs of uh, mysticism with his with his waving to the crowd with the with the devil horn thing, and he's oh, got other people. Oh, the hide laws and all those things. Yeah. Well, what is what is this? I mean, this devil wave that 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 all these elites do is that does that just a uh, mean? Does it mean anything, or or is it just a well, nonsense? Well, I think it's a sacred signals to the uh, to, to the, the Gnostics, the people who know, and you can give them certain signs, and they know that you know. That's it. And is George a part of the crew, or is he one of the Noahide people? He, he's a Gentile, isn't he? Well, he's supposedly a Gentile, but uh, uh, he's related to the uh, British throne. And it's pretty well established that uh, his family has been in occult uh, operations for 500 years. Well, because he's involved in that, uh, does that make him uh, eligible to be spared by, the, uh, by these organizers when they bring the 
the curtain down on what goes on? Uh, well, uh, when things get to uh, certain stages, nobody's going to be spared. They have to get rid of everybody. And who's going to be left standing? Just the Jewish uh, group? Uh, just the insiders, the real insiders. You see, I've told the audience for years that uh, uh, the Harriman family was lackeys of the Rothschilds yeah. and that the uh, Bush family was lackeys of the uh, Harrimans. And that's the whole story. These are, these are just lackeys. They don't matter. They'll get rid of them any time they feel like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I wonder sometimes, Eustace, you know, I've got over, over 150 files out on the Internet. Many of them touch the truth very, very uh, pointedly. And does that insulate me in any way from, from their attack, or at least a little bit? It does somewhat, you see. People used to wonder why I was killed years ago because I exposed the old Federal Reserve racket. And the answer was that if they killed me, I said that I'd already put the word out. If they killed me after the fact, it would only publicize my work even more. Well, I've come to that conclusion as well here because... Yeah, there's a certain insulation that you get from that. So it's just as well to take a very forward position and hold it. Well, I, I, I know that holding it is the key here. And I, I also know that, uh, I, you know, I've actually grown in numbers from uh, leaving Genesis than actually shrinking. And that's an interesting fact because I believe the country and the world are hungry for these facts. Oh, everybody's hungry for the fact. And that's the reason that my books lasted over everybody, because nobody else was telling the truth. They were giving them little glimmers of the truth. But you can't live on glimmers. You've got to have the whole truth. And uh, that's what I always try to give people. Well, the trust, the tr you can trust me, uh, Eustace, to do the whole deal. Because Certainly. you know what? I, 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 I've got the, I got the story. I'm giving it to the public. And I've got to tell you something. It's a dangerous game. They've been threatening my, my other guests not to come on my programming. Uh, they've actually, uh, I, I'm certain, have done things to some of my researchers. Uh, that's the only thing that could explain some of the bizarre reactions I've been getting from people. Um, I'm wondering, you know, what, they must be planning to something quite soon because they're actually looking like they're panicking. I think they are panicking because uh, for the first time they see uh, the light going out at the end of the tunnel. Well, you know, it's because of the efforts of people like you setting the stage for this, Eustace, and i got to tell you. Well, we've been working a long time, and it's, uh, it's really beginning to pay off. Uh, you know, are there, are there places in the world who are, uh, are on our side quite convincingly, or are they in, in command almost everywhere? No, I think that all over the world there's people on our side, and people have always been on our side. That's why America's always been a beacon light of freedom to the entire world, because everybody knew, and they never questioned it, that this is the land of liberty. And that's why that, uh, the Zionists had to come over here and take it over. Well, they have, haven't they, though? Oh, they've yes, done, they've they, done they, a sin, haven't they? they, they they've done a sin, but uh, if we survive this, we can survive anything. Well, I know that their plans are to eliminate massive numbers of, uh, of people. They, they have a population reduction strategy. Uh, because we are considered Esau or Goyim, and we are less than uh, these people. And, oh, and yes. Is that their goal? Oh, yes, that's animals, uh, to, to reduce us all to animals. You know, George Orwell's, one of his most famous books was Animal Farm. Yeah. This, uh, he was re reflecting this philosophy of that book. Well, interesting, when I, when I noticed that uh, these people actually, uh, you know, have, an, have a, the nerve in our country to call criticism of, the, of certain people in the Jewish community anti-Semitism when 90% of the Jewish community uh, of Ashkenazis are not even Semitic. Oh, no. They're Turco-Edomites and, uh, and, and Khazars, and that's, that's it. <laughs> they have no, uh, no roots in the land of uh, the present land that is called Israel whatsoever. And so the, the, the promised land that, uh, that God promised the Israelites was never promised to these people. Well, nobody's ever seen the contract, and we don't know whose who's name is on it. <laughs> well, I have to agree with that as well. But, you know, here's the thing, though. They have such control over news and can exert so much control over uh, leadership. Uh, what is your guess on how they've been able to do that? I, my guess is, and maybe you can mirror this or, or expand on it, is they have used... Um, uh, 
they, they could get po people compromised early in their careers. Let's say, oh yeah, well, the Panama, after the Panama Canal, they, they involve you in a scandal early in your career, and then they control you the rest of your career. And it could be sexual, it could be financial, it could be anything, but they... It could be anything, yeah. But the way they control it now, they're into everything. It's sexual and it's uh, alcohol and drugs and everything. They do it all. <laughs> and at least a lot of the child pornography and whatnot is from these people as well, isn't it? Oh, pedophilia. Pedophilia is one of the biggest rackets in the world. You know, Father Flanagan's Boys Town was actually the headquarters for pedophilia in the United States for many years. It became the most uh, lucrative charity and philanthropy in the United States. Because so many millionaires were pouring money into it. Really? Oh, yes. They were yeah. flying planes all over the United States, playing planes full of boys uh, to entertain politicians and millionaires. Oh, uh, like, why, why does that make me so... I feel vomitous just to hear you say <laughs> those things. Well, it's so shocking. And to think that so many young lives are being destroyed like this, is, it's enough to blow your mind. Well, this is one of the reasons why most people can't wrap their brain around this conspiracy and the fact that, that they would be involved in pedophilia or they would be involved in a world takeover of these people. Because it's such a big conspiracy, Eustace, how do we shrink this conspiracy down to the common man's size so they can start digesting just how dangerous things really are? Well, we can't shrink it down, but we've got to make people realize the enormity of the situation. I mean, after I was just a little country boy, and I went to Washington and New York and Los Angeles, and I saw all this la all this la life at first hand. And uh, it, that, that never fazed me. It was shocking, but it never got me down at all. I was never depressed by it. Well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not depressed by it. I am feeling the urgency of the of the hour here to get this uh, information out because I do know. They are getting backed into a corner, and when you corner a, a, a nest of rats, uh, they have a tendency to strike out. Well, rabid wolves can be very dangerous. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think you're right, and, you know, here, here's the other side of it. I, 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 I believe we're going to defeat these people handily. Uh, it won't come uh, a, a, in a bloodless way, I don't believe. Uh, so what do you see coming uh, in, the, in the future here, Eustace? Well, I see the whole situation uh, tensing quite a bit, but I, I'm not worried about it because I feel like, you know, after all I've seen at first hand, I feel like the American people are still sound. It's incredible, but uh, uh, our genetics are still intact. It's a basic situation. Well, you know, I I, I think you're you're a very encouraging uh, soul here, uh, Eustace, because from what I've gathered, America is becoming less and less uh, capable and, and, and cognizant of their world around them as a result of being poisoned by fluorides and aspartanes and MS monosodium glutamates and uh, mercury. And, and, and these, these are all intentional acts by the same group, aren't they? Oh, they certainly are. Well, the inter integrating of the American school system in 1954 really was the end of education in the United States. Yeah. There's, been, there's been no education since 1954. Well, and so once they got control of education, then they started introducing uh, inoculations to children. They started uh, demanding uh, uh, that they take certain uh, medications that were obviously harmful in, in, in well, retrospect. Well, they were well known to be harmful. And so children were uh, being sent to school by their parents, and the school nurse would give them these uh, poisonous injections. In my book on the history of the AMA, it's called Murder by Injection. Because murder by injection is a whole story. And what are they trying to do? Weaken our resistance to disease or destroy our longevity or just to make us sick as a general population? Well, uh, all three, because it's all intended to lower your resistance and your will to resist. Well, I also know that fluoride was used during the Nazi era to uh, reduce the intellect of people it was administered to. Oh, yes, and, what... and then communism did the same. You see, all the isms, communism, Fascism and Nazism were practically the same thing. They were all started by the Rothschilds in uh, Germany in 1838. Well, but uh, what I was talking about, though, is that they were using fluoride uh, as a dumbing down agent. Oh, yeah, because it affects the central nervous system and the immune system. And didn't, didn't that, uh, they knew this in Germany because they were administering it to large masses of people uh, that they were holding 
and they knew it had a very strong effect on people's intelligence. Well, Stalin was using the same thing at the concentration camps in Russia because he found out that by giving uh, fluoridated water to the prisoners, he could, uh, he could run his camps with one-third of the number of guards that he formerly needed to control the people. And, of course, you know that uh, the water systems in the United States are being bought up by none other than Suez Lyonnais des Eaux and by a company called, um, uh, what's the name of it? It begins with a V. Um, not for, not Vivendi anymore. They changed their name. But it's, they're, both of these companies are owned, guess who? Rothschild money. Oh, yes. And they bought the company called U.S. Filter, which was America's largest water distribution company. And they... They, they, give, they distribute water in most of the large cities in the United States today. Oh, yeah. Well, and they're training the people to drink bottled water because they're saying uh, that the, the public water systems are no good. And so the people are being trained to uh, drink bottled water, and the bottled water is, is simply tap water. It's bottled, it's bottled and sold as uh, bottled water. Oh, boy. The tangled web they weave. Now, as we, as we come out of this fog and begin to wake up to the facts, as we've been uh, understanding them for some time now, what do you think is going to happen first? Is it going to be a financial situation, or is it going to be something in a, in a, a different vein? Houston? Well, the financial situation is very simple. You know, my audiences have been asking me for 50 years at my lectures to say, when is the collapse coming? And I would tell them always the same thing. I'd say, the collapse will come when the government stops printing uh, counterfeit money. Uh, and, of course, they haven't uh, quit yet, so the crash isn't here yet. But isn't there a point which, I mean, I know that they stopped, <laughs> they stopped even reporting the M3, which you and I both know means that's the amount of, of money and, and credit in circulation. And what it is is a real aggregate number of, of what they've been printing. And so if they've gotten rid of this now, oh, the yeah. first time in history, uh, that, that bodes poorly for the future as far as I know. Well, it's, I mean, there is no future. <laughs> <laughs> the system doesn't have a future. It's, it's over. Well, I, I mean, do you think America is going to have to be reborn in a different, uh, a completely different, um, uh, I don't know, package? I mean, look, we've come too far and, and, and slipped too far over time to just fix what's in, in front of us. I think we have to do a do-over. Uh, well, we had a very simple, and in the 19th century, we had a very simple economic system in the United States. It was called two-name paper. I mean, yeah. I borrowed $20 a year, and I gave you a note uh, for the $20, and my name and your name on that. That's what they call two-name paper. You see, the Jews got into the uh, international acceptance market where they were trading uh, a debt all over the world. And that's what they're doing today. When you take out a mortgage, it, it, it will line up in uh, Austria or Israel or anywhere. You don't know who owns it. But uh, everybody makes money off of it. And that's called international acceptance. And you see, the whole Federal Reserve System was created by Paul Warburg at the uh, Jekyll Island Conspiracy in 1912. And uh, he was the uh, chairman of the International Acceptance Corporation. So he was the the master of acceptance is all over the world, and he's the, the man who single-handedly created the whole federal reserve system. Well, I know he did it with Sheaf in tow, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, all of these things that we've discussed, they've been, re they've been repeated on this broadcast many times by other people, uh, including researchers that I've had. And, and, in fact, Europe is more awake about this, these facts than we are in America. Isn't that not true? Well, they've been trying to uh, straighten out the monetary system in Europe ever since the Rothschilds took over in 1800. And uh, Ezra Pound, you know, came out of Europe, and he was educated in Europe, and he brought all that back to me. And so uh, they, they have uh, tried to introduce sane money systems in various countries in Europe. In fact, that was the whole idea of uh, World War II, was that Germany and Italy wanted to get out of the central bank system, the uh, the Zionist international system. And that's why they had to be attacked and destroyed. Ah. Uh, no ideology but, uh, behind it at all. It's purely financial. Well, you know, it killed 57 million people, Eustace. Well, it killed uh, probably 100 million. Well, during the last century, they killed 100 million, but that war alone, that just that one conflict was 57 million. Oh, yeah. 
uh, and, and, and untold losses of, of health and of, of, of life's work and of, of, of happiness and just when are we going to, as a, as a, as a, a race of uh, creatures, uh, going to rise above this sickness? I mean, it's, it's going to come by waking up to the people spreading yeah. the sickness. It's going to come by the necessity. People have to rise to the occasion that uh, understand what's uh, going on, and then I have to know what to do about it. Well, yeah. I, sir, I know what to do about it. I mean, I, I'm, first of all, that we... we the whole thing is, is everything that I can see has gone wrong in the last 200 years has been at the hands of these people. It is. You know, it's so easy to trace when you get into it. It's walking down, like walking down the open road. Everything's so, right there in front of you. What kind of world could we have had without these people cr uh, ruining it for us, Eustace? Well, we could have had a paradise, a golden age, because with America in the 19th century, we were ready to lead the entire world into the golden age, and these guys got in there wrecked the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there had never been a world war in the history of the world, but we had two world wars in the, in the 20th century. Well, I think what they've got planned for us, if they were able to get get it, uh, you know, finished, uh, would be much worse than the last century. Oh, yes. They intend to, they intend to intensify. Uh, well, I, I have said for over a year, two years that this is World War Three that's going on right now. And uh, that, that was all predicted, you know, at the Zionist International Conference in 1896 in Basel, Switzerland. It said we're going to have World War One, World War Two, and finally World War Three, which will bring everything into our hands. And your your guess right now is that they're not winning. Uh, they're not winning. Uh, World War Three started out as a fiasco because World War Two was simply a rerun of World War One. There was nothing new in it, and uh, it didn't. Uh, work out very well for anybody. And World War Three is uh, started out as a fiasco, but it's got worse every day. Well, it, you know, uh, we are. I mean, there's so much disinformation out there. What would you recommend to my listeners to uh, so that they? I mean, Americans today, many of them like to be spoon-fed information, and I've always urged them to look into these things themselves. But I don't think the majority of people will ever take me up on that on that recommendation. So how do we get more of the masses tuned into this truth, Eustace? Uh, I, I know I've been doing a heck of a job with it because I, I'm looking at the numbers. They're starting to really grow. Oh, yeah, but, people really want to know. Well, how do we make it really blossom? Uh, well, it's going to blossom of itself, itself because of the need of people to have it. Because uh, there was an old saying that uh, it's, it's fun to be fooled, but it's more fun to know. And the American people are going to wake up someday and find out but it's more fun to know what's going on than it is to be fooled by it. Well, I think we can thank uh, our, our imbecile, uh, unelected President George <laughs> W. Oh, he's been perfect. He, he really is. is. The, he's <laughs> the biggest gift to humanity in the history of mankind. Yeah, he probably is there solely for the purpose of ushering out this whole crooked uh, deal. Yes, but, but, it, but it backfired because he was too stupid. Oh, yeah, he was too stupid to do the job. <laughs> You know, I mean, when people start world wars, you've got to have people who know what they're doing. And this guy, I mean, he is a bungler from, from, the, from the first to the last, and it's just astonishing. However, that's enough said about that. You know, Eustace, I want to thank you for coming on. We've done about, about 35, 40 minutes here of, of continuous talk, and I want to let you know this. Uh, I'm, I'm carrying on in your tradition. Good. Uh, I've I've picked up from where you've left off, and I'm 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 I've got to tell you there aren't a lot of me around. Oh, I'm and sure of that. I'm, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> well, I, the, the fact is, I, I'm I'm hoping to get some assistance at some point from some other courageous people, and uh, and and at least maybe some donations from them. This is one of the things I've asked for. I said, well, if you can't help me yourself, at least give me five bucks and let me get some some. Uh, advertising out there and, and spread this around a little bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I can't do it all, and, and my, my partner, uh, Eric, and I, uh, you know, we're, 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 geez, here's the interesting thing. We're, two, we're just two guys with a beat-up computer. I don't even have a printer at home here, uh, Eustace. And, and, and my partner is just a guy with a printer and a, and, a, and a computer system, and we've been able to do so much damage to these fools, it, just the two of us. It's almost astonishing. Well, well, they're stuck with the old uh, P.T. Barnum uh, situation. 
There's a sucker born every minute. And uh, they're, they've continued this uh, uh, carnival sideshow right up through, through the 21st century, and it's all catching up to them now because sideshows, you can only pull the same uh, act on the yokels for so many times. They finally even uh, catch on. Well, I think you're absolutely right with that. Anyway, I, w I want to say to you that I I'm grateful for your assistance, for your research that you've done, and just for you being you. You, just, you are truly a, a, a world treasure, and I, I consider someone like you a dear friend and a, and, a, and a hard worker for the truth. And I will be contacting you very soon. We can maybe talk about some other issues or whatnot. Oh, there's lots to talk about. <laughs> Well, I, the next time I, uh, we get on the radio, maybe I'll have a couple of new subjects to add into the mix. And I want to thank you for coming on the French Connection today. Uh, it's well, it's been always a, a pleasure call. to be on your show.